Being able to create effective two-part compositions can lead to incredibly rewarding experiences for any composer. With just two independent musical lines, you can produce music that is rich in texture, harmonically sound, and complete. Two-part writing is also a technique that can be used when writing for larger ensembles. So for example, when you're writing for a string quartet, why not have a section where the second violin and the viola perform alone? Or let's go larger still. In your next composition for wind ensemble, you may wish to include a duet section between the first clarinets and the bassoons. The technique works for choral music as well. The more you develop this skill, the more you'll want to include two-part writing in your compositions. So let's get started. And again, our starting point will be a simple chord progression. Here is a series of chords in E major. Now, because we are effectively creating two melodic lines, we will use the same process we used previously in the melody writing video. To make life easy for ourselves, I have written the names of the chord notes below the staves. The next step is to create a very simple melody using only notes of the chords. Do not try to be adventurous at this stage. We want a line that is functional. We are not creating the finished product at this stage. Note that my shortest note value is a quaver and that I am including some repeated notes and notes separated by the interval of a third. This is intentional because I am creating opportunities for passing and auxiliary notes. The next step is to harmonize the melody with the second melodic line. Do not add anything to the top line at this stage. We now get to the most important point in two-part writing. If you take nothing else from this tutorial, make sure that you understand this piece of information. Each note of the melody must be harmonized by a note a third or sixth below and that note must be of the underlying chord. It must belong to that chord. This information is so important, I'm going to say it again. We harmonize the notes of the first melody with notes in the second melody, either a third or a sixth below. And the note that we do harmonize the melody with must also be a note of the chord. So if we look at bar one, the chord is E major, and we want to harmonize each note in the top line with a note either a third or sixth below. The first note is a G sharp, and a third below G sharp is an E natural. E obviously belongs to the E major chord, so it is clearly an option for us to use. If we look at our other option and go a sixth below the melody note, we get a B natural. B natural also belongs to the E major chord, so we have a choice. In this case, we can choose either the E natural or the B natural. So there are a number of options open to us. But for now, I'll harmonize the first G sharp with a B natural, a sixth below, and the second G sharp with an E natural, a third below. Now to the final note of bar one. The melody note is a B natural. So a third below B natural is G sharp. This is fine because G sharp belongs to the E major chord. But if we go a sixth below B natural, we get a D sharp. We can't use the D sharp because it does not belong to the underlying E major chord. So in this case, 
there is only one option available to us, and that is the G sharp. With practice, you will get quicker at the harmonizing process. So stick with it, don't rush at this stage, and make sure every note is harmonized correctly. Any mistakes here will certainly affect the end product. So to bar two, the chord is B major, and we have two D sharps in the melody. A third below D sharp is B natural. This is a good option, as B natural belongs to the B major chord. And if we go a sixth below, we get an F sharp, which again is available to us because the F sharp also belongs to the B major chord. We have a few possibilities for harmonization, so I'm going to place an F sharp under the first D sharp and a B natural under the second. The final note of bar two is a B natural. If I go a third below, I get a G sharp. This is no good, as it does not belong to the B major chord. So I need to go a sixth below, which is a D sharp. Perfect. D sharp belongs to the B major chord. I'm sure you're starting to understand the process. So I'm now going to jump to the completed harmonization of the passage. But please take care when going through this stage of the process. You must harmonize each melody note with another note of the chord that is a third or sixth below the melody note. At this stage, the fun begins. We get to add melodic and rhythmic interest to both lines, and at the same time create the impression that both lines are independent of each other. The golden rule to remember at this point is do not place movement in both lines at the same time. This will most likely lead to harmonic errors. Instead, alternate the movement between the lines. Let's have some fun. In bar one, I'll add an auxiliary note and another chord note to the higher part. And I'll leave beat two as it is so that I can put some movement in the lower part later on. I can do something similar in bar two and add two auxiliary notes to bar three. If you are unsure of passing notes, auxiliary notes and other chord notes, I suggest you go back and watch the melody writing video where they are explained in detail. Okay, that's enough for the top line. In bar four, I can add passing, auxiliary and other chord notes to the lower part. You will notice that I am intentionally creating the same pitch shape with every group of semiquavers. This helps me to establish a theme and develop that theme over a period of time. So to bars five, six and seven, I add auxiliary and other chord notes to continue the pitch shape in the upper line. Oh, and why not? I'll throw the same figure in the lower part here in bar 7. Note that I am avoiding having movement occur in both lines at the same time. Now to complete the passage, I simply put movement in the lower part wherever I have left a window to do so in the upper part. To create some variety, I'll use the same pitch shape but flip it upside down. This will allow me to create some further thematic development. So here is the finished product. A 
really cool trick to extend the passage is to sound it again, but swap the parts. So move the lower part to the top and drop the top part to the bottom. You will need to jiggle things a little, but the harmonization will work. Another variation may be to alternate the movement at every half beat rather than every beat, such as in this example. Can you see how the movement alternates more frequently? This certainly thickens the texture and makes the lines appear more intertwined. So to recap, number one, create a simple melodic line using only notes of the underlying chord. Do not be adventurous at this stage. We only want to produce a functional melody at this point. Number two, in the second line, harmonize each note of your melody with another chord note, either a third or sixth below. This is very important. Use only chord notes that are a third or a sixth below the melody note. And finally, number three, when creating melodic and rhythmic interest in your two-part compositions, alternate the movement between the lines. Do not have movement on top of movement. And of course, create movement by using passing notes, auxiliary notes, and other chord notes. Creating two-part compositions can be very enjoyable and rewarding. I hope you have great fun developing this compositional technique.